Hey, this is part three of making a webcomic page, and today we're going to be looking at lettering and making our speech balloons. It's best to do this part before we actually get into inking. That way we have our space set for our word balloons, make sure we have room for art, and everything else. But before we get into typing, we have to figure out what our fonts are going to be. Now for Danger Vision, I use the Comica Display, spelled with K's. You can find it on dafont.com. There's a lot of other good fonts here, and uh, I suggest browsing around Defont to... Maybe find something that looks good in your speech bubbles. Another place that I end up going to is Blambot. They have a lot of free fonts as well. But if you're not into using pre-created fonts and you want to hand letter, hand lettering can take a long time. Instead of writing each word out on your speech bubbles, I would suggest doing some sort of handwriting font. There's a lot of handwriting font sites and apps that you can use, but I tried out one called MyScriptFont.com, and it was pretty easy to use. You just click and download one of the template files, and then open it up into Photoshop, and it'll have all these little boxes with letters in them that, that are kind of grayed out. You just write your letter in your own handwriting into each one of these boxes, save the file, return to this site, and then upload it. It'll give you a font file to download. Install that font file, and then you can already start typing out in the letters that you had written. An important thing to check out is the licensing on some of these free fonts. Some of them will state that you're allowed to use them freebie no matter what, and some of them you can use them on non-profit types of designs, and some of them just say you can use this on your free comic, but you can't use them for some other reason. Reason, just make sure you check out the licensing right now. That way you can avoid any kind of thing in the future in case something cool happens with your comic. Now that we got the font thing out of the way, we'll go ahead and start lettering our comic. As for font size, I usually go with 8. Make sure that the center text is selected. Drag your box out and start typing. As for right now, it doesn't matter where we put our text. Just make sure that you want to make it kind of a rounded look to it. And we'll keep this up until the whole page is finished. All right, now that we have our words in, let's make a layer underneath all these text layers, and we'll right-click and go to Blending Options. On the Layer Style, click on Stroke. We want our position outside, Opacity 100, Size, is, I use usually around 4 pixels, and the color is going to be black, and hit OK. Now underneath the Rectangular Marquee Tool, we're going to use the Elliptical Marquee Tool. Now take your cursor and right around the middle of this, this text, hold down Alt and click. Now holding down Alt will let you make the circle from the center and just drag it out to about where a little bit past where it engulfs the whole the whole text and then use your arrow keys to try to center it out a little bit better. Now with the selection still made, let's go underneath our lasso tool and use the polygon lasso tool. Hold down Shift, that way we're going to be adding to the selection and click anywhere from inside of the circle and point it towards your character. And we'll make kind of a triangle. This is going to be our speech bubble tail. We'll grab our fill tool, our fill bucket tool, and we'll make sure that we're filling in with the color white. And when we fill this in with white, it's going to automatically put that stroke around it, and we have our speech bubble. It's still not centered, so we can take our arrow tool and then use our arrow keys and just bump it around until it looks like it's about center. And we do the same thing with the rest of these speech bubbles. So our first panel is finished. It, the, the same idea goes with the rest of the page. Just keep on making your circles, adding the tails, and then filling it in all on the same layer. Or if you have to use another layer, that's fine. As for sound effects, you can do those with text or you can write them out yourself. I usually wait until after the entire page is inked and colored before I add the sound effects. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. We're going to be doing inking. I'm going to talk about brushes and erasers, and then we're going to go ahead and ink this page. So I hope to see you next time in the next video for the inking part. I'll see you. Uh, bye.